Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I want to thank Cricut for sponsoring today's video. So my pantry behind me is in some serious need of some TLC and some spring cleaning. I figured that I would redo the entire thing and then we would make some labels on my Cricut just to spruce it up, make them look pretty and nice and aesthetically pleasing to look at. So if that's something you're interested in, then just keep watching. So a few of my favorite features of the Cricut Joy is that it's really compact, small, simple, and easy to use. It's perfect for on the go or at home, so it's totally up to you. With the Precision Blade, this little Joy can cut so many different materials like vinyl, iron-on, cardstock, peel and stick label paper. You can also use infusible ink and you can even use construction paper. You also can write, draw, and doodle to make labels for your laundry room. Cricut also offers hundreds of ready-to-use designs on Design Space. And lastly, my favorite feature of the Joy is that you can just load and go with their smart materials and you can even cut up to 20 feet at a time. Okay guys, so as you saw in the beginning of this video, my pantry was a disgusting mess. I took everything out, I put it on the table, I got rid of all the food and all the things, we're trying to eat healthier, um, and then I just organized it. So now we're gonna make a few th little decor pieces as well as all the labels for my containers. So to start off, what I always do is take measurements of all my pieces and then write them down. So for the first project, I wanted to make a pantry sign. So I went into Cricut Design Space. I saw something that I might like. And um, first, before I did that, I created a shape unlocked it and then up in the bar you'll see where you can change the height and the width i changed the height and the width to the size of my sign and then like i said i went into design space i added a picture that i liked and when i made it bigger i still wasn't too happy with it so i'm going to show you how to go online you uh, just search like whatever you want to uh, make a design on and you just type it in and then you'll search it. Sometimes there's Etsy shops that have them. There's all kind of different places that sell SVGs and PNGs. And then you'll just purchase that, download it to your computer. And then in Design Space on the left hand side, you'll see Uploads. You click Uploads, upload your picture to Design Space, and then you can insert it into Design Space. So once I did all that and insert it to my project, then I just resized it, I deleted the background, and then I move on to my next project. So what I do is I always just create all my designs, I save them, and then when I'm ready to cut, then I'll cut them all at the same time. So for our labels, I'm not going to show you every single word that I did because that would just be repetitive, but I'm going to show you the first one and then you can do all of your labels the same exact way. You can switch up the font. It's totally up to you. So once again, once again, I started out with the square. I made it into the shape that I want or the size that I want, I should say. And then I went down in the left hand column and I clicked text. I then just typed in baby food and I played around with it with the font. I wasn't too sure what kind of font that I wanted, um, but I have realized that if you're doing labels and you want to do very small words, try to stay away from skinny letters because sometimes because they're so small, they don't cut right. So I always try to go with a little bit bigger of a font when I'm doing my labels. Um, like I said, when I was showing the machine, you can also get the um, writable label 
writable label stickers. Sorry, that's a tongue twister. <laughs> um, and then just cut out like the shape of a label and write on it. But I don't like my handwriting, so that is why I do it this way. But basically, I just added in the font, I sized it to how I wanted it, and then I just continued to do that. Now, for the last project that I'm going to do, I have this ugly bag holder and it's been over my um, pantry door for the longest time and it's just an eyesore I hated it so I'm gonna show you guys how to make a pretty bag holder so once again I just did the same exact thing with the shape now in this is instance I started with the lettering and the animals first which is why I had to send the animals and the words to the front but if you put the shape in first then you can skip that step but all I did was just use my text put in bags I resized it you always want to hit that unlock button in the left hand bottom corner that way you can unlock your word and move it up and down as well as um, side to side. So I just did that and then I inserted a sheep and a cow, or not a sheep, a pig and a cow to see which one I liked better. And then I ended up liking the cow better. So once you insert that and you get it how you want, you want to delete the shape behind it. Then you will drag your cursor across the entire thing, the bags and the animal, and then hit weld. That way when you send it to your machine, it's going to cut exactly how you want to place it on your project, rather than the machine adjusting it to... Basically what the machine will do is it will adjust it to your mat to get the most use out of your vinyl, but I don't really mind about that it's just much easier so it's totally up to you once I do that then I just um, hit make it and then you want to follow the prompts Farmhouse decor is my specialty and much more. So I would love if you would stick around by clicking that red subscribe button. Um, I don't normally do too many Cricut videos, but I do like to give my viewers that Cricut content who have been asking for it. So that is what we're doing today. If that's not your cup of tea, I totally understand. But just know that there's so much more to this channel. So definitely stick around and become part of the family. So for this week's earrings of the week, each week on my channel, I bring to you my favorite earrings of the week. So this is them. Look how pretty that shape is, you guys. I love the little tassels hanging off. I have a few pairs like this, and I don't know why I'm always drawn to the ones with tassels on them. I think they just look so fun and different and funky that I just love that. So if you want to know where to get them, just go to your local Walmart in the jewelry section. That's where I got mine. So with all that being said, let's jump back into today's DIYs. So now we're going to prep our projects. I take this sign from Dollar Tree. I had already um, painted one, but it's a little bit shorter than I made my sign, or I should say I printed the vinyl out. So all I do is I take this sign from Dollar Tree. It was already um, like cleaned up. I had already took the tag off of it and took the embellishments off the back and then I filled in the holes and painted it with a distress coat of white Waverly chalk paint. Next I take this old Lysol container um, that was obviously empty and cleaned out. I painted the lid with some ink Waverly chalk paint and for the container I took the label off of it. I then had this scrapbook paper that I cut down to size. I needed two pieces, so really I needed one piece and then another piece of the second sheet. So once I had the first sheet cut down, or actually both of them cut down to the height, then I just took my disappearing purple glue stick. I heavily put the glue stick on the back of the scrapbook paper for the first piece and then I laid it on my container and smoothed it out really nicely. 
Next, I took this second piece and I just kind of measured like how big of a piece that I needed and then I cut that out and glued that down to the empty space as well. So I set that aside for the glue to dry and now we're going to cut all of our stuff out. I take my machine out of the bag. I love this little carrying case for this joy, you guys, because I can take it with me wherever I need to go. If I am going to my brother's, then I can bring it there. So it really just depends. I also love the fact that you can use smart vinyl, which means you don't need a mat. The less steps, the better for me with all three of my kids running my husband's business. I like quick and easy things, so that is why I love the Joy so much. So once you cut down the piece that the computer will instruct you, before you cut it, the computer on Design Space will say, you need a piece that is 30 inches. So once you have that cut down, it'll instruct you to put it into the machine and the machine will um, make sure that you have a piece that is the right size and then you can cut your design. So once I cut my pantry design out, then I go ahead and I use my white to print out my labels. I also printed out the bags um, label and I then weeded them. So all you do is just take the backing sheet, you grab the corner of the vinyl and then pull it away from all of your wording. Hi, look, look up here, wave. <laughs> sorry guys she was just way too cute not to share um but prior to that little clip i just took my poker tool and i weeded out all of that vinyl i think it's called a weeding tool <laughs> pretty self-explanatory right um, but once I had everything weeded, now I'm not going to lie, you guys, I do not know why, but the frame of this pantry sign would not cut right. It, I literally did it like three times. I'm sure it's just user error because if you see the pantry sign printed out wrong, and I honestly did not even notice it until it was up in my kitchen, and I was like, wait a minute, that looks a little bit funny, um, but... All I did was just improvise with the frame. Um, I kind of cut a few of them and just placed it. And then once it was on the sign, then I just took a paint marker and I just filled in that little empty spot down at the bottom. So it really wasn't a big deal. You can't tell once I was done. Um, but anyway, once I have it on the transfer tape, then all I do is I pull back the transfer tape. Now the easiest way to do that is to peel back the corner and then you wanna pull the transfer tape flush with the transfer tape that hasn't been pulled up yet and just basically pull it flat and the uh, vinyl will not come up with the transfer tape. You also wanna varnish that down with your um, varnishing tool that way um, it kind of pushes it down onto the sign and it just makes it much easier when you go to pull that transfer tape back. So last but not least, you guys already know, I love to make my signs look weathered and old, kind of like a vintage sign in like an old antiques um, market or whatever you want to call it. So all I do is take my distressing ink and my blending brush and I randomly just go around the sign and make spots look old and weathered. Last but not least, I take my antique wax and my chip brush and I just dry brush all the way around the edges as well as a little bit on the inside of the sign. Look how amazing this turned out, you guys. It didn't take me long at all to do, and I am just in love with the way that it turned out. So let me know in the comments down below if you would make one too.
Moving on to our bag holder, I take the lid and surprise, surprise, I dry brush the entire lid around the edges with some white Waverly chalk paint. Once I had the lid dry brushed, then I take the jar or the container, I should say, and I lay it down flat in front of me. Well, actually, first I take the design away from the backing sheet. Now, sometimes it doesn't want to come up, especially when you're using permanent vinyl. So all I do is I just slowly pull that transfer tape back. And if there are spots that need to be lifted up, I just use my weeding tool to get under those edges and then they usually pull up really nicely. Now, if you saw there for the S, just make sure you're pulling it back slow um, you don't want to rip your letters and then once you pull it all the way back and it's on your transfer tape then you can lay it down on your container smooth it out and then because I'm using uh, scrapbook paper I slowly pulled that transfer tape away from it so now I'm going to show you how to get your bags into the container nicely. So I just took my old container. I kind of dumped all the bags out on my desk and then I did one bag at a time. I laid it out flat, smoothed it down, and then folded it in half, making sure that the handles were in the top left hand corner. So once I had them kind of overlapped, you can see what I'm doing here. With the first bag, I kind of pull the handle over to the side and then I start rolling my bags. Now you wanna make sure that the handle to the next bag is being rolled in place like I'm doing here. I then just figured out that I could just roll it and then add each bag as I went because my my table had stuff all over it so I couldn't like lay out a really long line of the bags but it was really easy to just do it the way that I'm doing here. Now for the bigger containers, for the bigger Lysol containers, you can do about 20 bags. For the smaller ones, you can do about 12 bags. So once you have them all rolled up, then all you have to do is stick it in your container. You put the lid on, making sure that that first bag handle is popping through the hole. Now, look how ugly this was, you guys. This ugly bag holder. Like I said, it was an eyesore. I couldn't stand it and look at this after. I love the way that this bag holder turned out. And I know that you'll let me know in the comments down below what you think. Now, once again, I'm going to show you my ugly pantry. It was disgusting. We had not so good food in here. Um, I still keep a little like sugary snacks for my kids, um, but I do make my husband sugar-free cookies and sugar-free muffins to enjoy for a snack once a day. I also like to enjoy them here and there, but I'm really trying to do right and lose some weight because... After being pregnant with my kids, I, I've just gained so much weight and it doesn't feel comfortable. So anyway, look how amazing this turned out, you guys. I could not be more happy with it. Uh, it just feels so clean. And once you organize things that were a disaster, it's just like a weight lifted off your shoulder. Now, I'm a regular person. I don't have an amazing pantry or like a top dollar top winning I should say award winning pantry but for me and my family this works so well so let me know in the comments down below what you guys think of this transformation if you like it if you hate it whatever the case may be I would love to hear from you in the comments down below I want to thank Cricut again for sponsoring today's video also don't forget to hit that thumbs up share it with your family and friends if you think that they would enjoy this video because those thumbs up and those shares and comments really help my channel to grow and help YouTube to notice me just a bit more so if nobody has told you today you are worthy you are gorgeous and I love you with all my heart and soul and I will catch you guys in the next one bye